All right, so I'm here with my husband, Ryan, and we're going to talk about the home birth experience that we had. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts throughout my pregnancy about home birth and moms opting for that decision and that option for them. And seems like one of the biggest hurdles or obstacles that they face when they are choosing a home birth is convincing their partner. I was pretty lucky that I did not have to do much convincing uh, when it came to this decision. And there were still, however, things that came up and uh, worries and concerns. And even a very last minute kind of panic that uh, we had to kind of work through. So I thought it would be helpful for um, anyone who reads or follows my content to listen to this open conversation between me and my husband about um, just choosing the home birth uh, together and how he was able to overcome the fears that uh, present themselves when choosing something that's a bit out of the ordinary, even though it is kind of, I guess, the the way that it was done the longest. It's no longer the the main choice or mainstream or status quo so so let's just dive into um your thoughts on home birth when i was a postpartum doula but not pregnant yet so it's something that i spoke about a lot um that you heard through my conversations but it wasn't something we were even considering because i was not pregnant so um what was your thought on home birth as a concept it was always interesting you present a lot of different facts that are surprising that you wouldn't think and you were very passionate on the topic so it was a lot of uh, good information to be receiving ahead of time it made it easier when the actual time came just having had some good knowledge on it already ahead of time i hear a lot of people like when they hear midwives they think of like you know woohoo feathers and sage and <laughs> And like, you know, giving birth in the forest. Did you have like an idea of what a midwife was and then brush up on that and get more information? Or had I prepared you well enough that you kind of knew what to expect? Oh, I mean, I had a good idea, I guess. People haven't always been giving birth in hospitals, so doctors haven't always been a part of it, nor do they necessarily need to be. And even if you don't know anything about them, then at least it's somebody who has knowledge on birth, who specializes in that and can help guide someone through it so and a lot of a lot of uh f- like mm-hmm. feedback i hear like moms will say that their partners get scared because a midwife is not a doctor is those that something that came up for you yeah but uh it's you can go over any kind of scary emergency possibility and that's always present no matter what setting you're in so it's just the fact, the idea of having a doctor close versus having a doctor a drive away is the scary part. It's not not doubting the caregiver that you chose to go with. We went to um, the Canadian Rockies early in my pregnancy. We had booked a trip and we went on it, even though I was throwing up on the plane and throwing up in the car and I was experiencing a lot of pregnancy sickness. Um, and when we were in Calgary on Mother's Day, we had a free viewing of uh, Business of Being Born that I was going to come home and watch, and we decided to watch it together in our hotel room. Um, I want to know your thoughts on the Business of Being Born. It's kind of like the first mm-hmm. source that I made you kind of sit through and listen. Well, not made you, like you were <laughs> very much an active participant, like you wanted to watch it. But it's something that was like, a lot of the stuff I'd been talking about, this was like not coming from me it was coming from other research and it was like a documentary that you watched on on birth and uh, the hospital's role and the system's role and all that stuff so did that help make your home birth decision easier um if so how and were you skeptical at all by some of the material in the documentary i wasn't skeptical of the material in the documentary a lot of it makes sense And uh, the medical system is flawed in many ways, not only in this area. What it brought to light for me is how mothers get poked and prodded and put through all kinds of things that 
are not necessarily for their benefit that uh, the system enforces. So although safety and security wise in terms of preserving your life and the baby's life, obviously hospital is or feels like, you know, a very safe place to be, but it in fact can leave you coming out with a lot of scars, emotional and physical, and you can be subject to medications and treatments and procedures that you do not want. So in terms of knowing or having an idea of having a birth plan, you kind of throw all the cards in the air when you go that route because you have very little control of what happens and it brought that to light for me. That's really interesting because I think people feel like going to the hospital, they have more control. And after watching that documentary, you're saying that you felt like you were kind of letting go of all control going that route rather than having a home birth where you're kind of more of the active participant and decision maker. In those moments, those high stress moments, the go time, you know, you'll be asked questions whether or not you want to go about something one way, but you're also being fed information. You're given one perspective on the situation and one view on how things are going. So you are being shown one side of things. And in the moment, you don't necessarily have the time to consider all the options, all the possibilities. You don't, you're, you're under pressure and medical staff can put you under more pressure so that you make the decisions they'd prefer you to make. And that became very obvious. There's that. There's that point of like, you're very vulnerable in this situation when you're about to have a child, especially your first, which is what we just experienced, where like you want everything to go right. Um, and not only do they present like their their suggestions and their best like you know, their best decision that you should make is often favorable to their system, their timeline, their protocols, not necessarily to what you want. And it won't, it won't necessarily be the best outcome for you. It might leave you with trauma, but, um, yeah, they'll suggest whatever is common to them and what is also convenient for them and their protocol. But there's also a point that came up for me in our experience and I'll I'll share my birth story eventually but in a situation as high emotion and st- I will say stress because you want everything to be okay and we live in a society where birth is portrayed as a medical emergency right off the bat um when we ended up in our situation sitting in front of an OBGYN saying this is what you should do and if you do that, I'm not going to let you go home and etc. The thought of putting responsibility in someone else's hands felt very relieving. Having someone say, this is what I suggest and this is what I would do, kind of puts the outcome on someone else. Like if we would have listened to what the OBGYN suggested and followed through with that, whatever the outcome would have been, would have been based on their decision and their suggestion. Whereas if the outcome of the birth or the experience is negative because of things going however they go, and it was our decision to not listen to the person in the lab coat and go home and have the home birth that we had envisioned and we worked for and we wanted, then it falls on us. You know, then it's it's this idea of like, well... It's our responsibility. It could have been avoided. We didn't listen to the advice. We didn't listen to the to the suggestion from authority or from people smarter than us. And and it's all that. So was that is that something that came up for you? Because I I actually felt a moment, and you know this because we almost we almost did not have our home our, our home birth and really went with what the OBGYN was suggesting. And for a minute there, it felt mm-hmm. like a lot of pressure was taken off of me having someone else make the like call the shots and take the reins was that something that for you you know it's like well 
my wife wants a home birth. I'm open to a home birth. She's educated me a lot on it. And I, you know, you educated yourself too and you watch these documentaries. And But there's still the what if something goes wrong because we chose this like far-fetched, you know, like holistic woohoo method that isn't even woohoo. Like that's how a lot of people we know and a lot of our elders were were born. But that's kind of the culture now. Um, so like the what if lands on you. Did you feel like the what if something goes wrong landing on someone else or like on the medical system was also maybe a bit relieving that it's not it's not you making you know a decision that's not necessarily supported well yeah that's in the background obviously like if you offer a home birth and something goes wrong then you have to answer for it but if you offer a hospital birth and something goes wrong you're who answers for it (laughs) you know no one answers for it right but and and a lot of times the complications that happen in a hospital could are due to the decisions they make. Right, and could have been avoided or due to the the interventions that weren't necessary. So so yeah, like who answers for that when when you go through the hospital like no one because that's just I guess common practice, you know. And when it falls on you, you you're you're choosing to take on all this pressure that you're going to have to answer for it if something goes wrong. And that I think that puts you in an even more vulnerable position when someone was ready to take the reins because they don't they won't have to answer for it, you know, if something goes wrong. And this person says, I want to do an induction. This is what we're going to do for you. This is what I suggest and this is how it should go. I think it's so much easier for us to bend and say, yes, okay, let's do that. Because even though that the um, chances of something going wrong is actually higher, no one has to answer for it. Um... Our first midwife appointment, I delayed the first ultrasound as much as I could. So I think we first sat with a midwife, like, I think past 12 weeks, just just over, I think, if I recall. Um, what was that like for you? They, Our midwives is a team of three midwives on each team. You get a primary, a primary midwife and two backup ones. And depending on who's on call, the night you go into labor, that's the midwife that's going to be assigned to you. But for most of prenatal postpartum appointments, you'll be with your primary. So we And they work out of a clinic that's just by our house here. So we went to this clinic, we walked in, met the receptionist, and then met our primary midwife, sat in her little office, and kind of went over midwifery care. Um, and that was your first really, like, and my, mine as well, actually, like, first experience with... Uh, a midwifery clinic so what were your thoughts on that and your experience on on that on the first meeting yeah like on your initial uh experience with meeting midwives well i mean was it what you thought it was going to be is it different and how is it different and how is it yeah i wouldn't say it was really indifferent than like speaking with a doctor at, at the at the clinic or the hospital spoke about some general things but <clears throat> a lot of the information was spread out over the over each meeting so you're getting small chunks of information that are pro- you know appropriate for where you are in your pregnancy and uh they don't uh they don't drown you in information right off the bat there but they they tell you what you need to know at that time and obviously very open to any questions that you have uh, but we kind of did a lot of our homework before these types of things. So Mm -hmm. our meetings were usually pretty quick. Yeah. Sometimes like we could end up sitting in our midwife's office for like maybe 30 minutes going over like information and checking my vitals, listening to the baby's heart rate and, and all that. Um, Maybe a bit longer even. Sometimes it was very quick. Um, But something I hear a lot from moms that have um, OBGYNs is like, it's a, it's like literally five minutes that they get to see the doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I don't think we've had any meetings that were less than uh, fifteen or twenty minutes. Yeah, well, I didn't. I did. One thing I did not do is shop around for midwives. So I kind of went to the clinic that was the closest, like literally walking distance from our our little neighborhood here. And I was assigned a team based on my due date, and I went with that team. I didn't interview midwives. I didn't kind of like try to see 
if one fit what I wanted. Like, I really just went with the first team of midwives that was assigned to me, um, being my first experience and going into it thinking that midwifery care was going to be so different from OBGYNs that, you know, sometimes they say there's bad apples everywhere. I did not even like think that there would be a bad apple situation or that there would be like anything similar to the medical system because I was going with midwifery care. I kind of put all of my hope and faith and trust in midwifery care, midwifery care and just went with the first thing that presented itself. We met the three midwives on our team and I recall meeting the midwife that was at our birth, um, which is the last one that we met of the three and leaving her office telling you that's the midwife that I want at my birth. Like that's that's the midwife that I connected with the most, even though you seem to think that maybe it would be the one I connected with the least. Or it was, uh, she, you know, she had a bit of a different vibe than the others. For me, it was the vibe that I wanted at my birth. And luckily for us, we ended up having her on call the night that I went into labor and had our daughter. So she was there with us. Um, and in hindsight now, there were things that came up with a midwife on our team that caused a lot of fear and anxiety and a feeling I personally felt like I was not believed or like maybe someone on our team was skeptical that I could have a home birth as a first time mom. Um, and I kind of want to know your take on that because a lot of moms that are opting for a home birth now and their partners are not down. Um, I want to make sure that they know that they have the opportunity to go look for a caregiver, a care provider that really vibes with their partner and them and their family. You don't have to just go with the first, first come first serve option like I did. Um, I honestly, I was really lucky that my I'll say not even favorite. It's just the one that was the most, the most aligned with me. Um, that that's who we had at our birth. Um, because it could have been someone else, and it could have been a much different experience. Um, so we went with the first team that was presented to us. What are your thoughts on that? Did you even know that we could kind of like shop around? Are you happy with the outcome, and what would you have done differently? No, I didn't really know you could shop around, but it's like, again, like with the system that we have, our medical system, like you can't really shop around for a doctor. You can't really, like you get what you get. You're lucky to have what you have. Right. So no, I didn't really think about shopping around or fizz or interviewing or, or, uh, you know, seeing who we fit with best, but obviously, you know, our team was composed of three individuals, all of whom were very different and some of whom we meshed with better than others. Yeah. What did you think of the midwife that I vibed with the most when I told you that I was vibing with her the most and you were kind of like surprised and finding out that she was going to be at her birth? The only reason I think that I was maybe, well, I don't know, not even surprised, but just that's not what I expected i mean it was she was um you know straight to business like all business which is exactly you know which is great um you know no bs um whereas you know some of the other uh people we spoke with were more like i guess more bubbly and more uh fluffy yeah and interestingly enough like you're saying that and i agree 100 percent there was a, bit, a lot of uh, like a big contrast between the three midwives on our team um and the ones that were more like talkative and social not not so not that, that our, not that our midwife wasn't social but the ones that talk the most and paint everything in a lot of colors and were very bubbly they're open with their lives as well you know sharing things yeah and, like their families and things like that yeah and and the one that was like a straight shooter let's get down to business and talked less and listen more is the one that I was I felt a very I felt maternal vibes from her which I really needed um in my birth experience because I I don't really have a, a bond with my my mother so I I really was looking for someone I felt like maternal vibes from 
and the straight shooter was that one for me um and I, i'm curious like now looking back on that experience the bubbly and colorful midwives were great leading up to the birth but wasn't the straight shooter the one we wanted in our experience the way that it went you know what i mean like the one that was straight to business and the one that was like no bs mm -hmm. like she was exactly who we needed at that time and if it was the colorful paint like painter ones we probably would not have had our home birth do you agree with that yep i agree so yeah so mm -hmm. like sometimes it's probably especially as like the partner you'll meet someone that's more more a certain way that you'll think is going to benefit your your wife i guess because it's going to be or your or your partner because they're the 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 caregiver that are more warm and they're maybe a bit more like colorful um but it's not necessarily what you're going to need when when it's when it's go time so i think really shopping around and trusting your your gut trusting your instinct and you know partners have a say in this as much as like mom but if mom is telling you this is the midwife that i'm aligned with and that i resonate with um just consider the gut feeling there and the the womb wisdom and the maternal instinct and and if you have an instinct too that it's someone that you're vibing with and that you would feel safe with and that's the most important thing we had well i guess like our main fear our main the main complication that we were scared of happening in a home birth happened and we felt safe through the entire management of that complication with that midwife so i think feeling safe is so important and if you don't feel safe you're never going to agree and you're never going to feel like you're making the right decision um so yeah finding a provider that you really vibe with that your partner is aligned with and that makes you feel safe should hell or high water come you know that you're confident putting your trust in that person's hands so we went to an event called choice of birthplace it was a little info night with the midwives and they showed all the home birth equipment should we choose a home birth and then they presented the hospital that they work out of should we choose to do shared care with them in an OBGYN. Um, and during that uh, that night, we sat with a couple other other couples that were choosing what they wanted as a uh, birthplace. And I just I just want to highlight here that like though home birth was what I knew I wanted from day one that I found out I was pregnant, we didn't tell anyone we were we we were considering a home birth until very late in the pregnancy because there are so many boxes here that need to be ticked for you to be a, like cleared for a home birth and my boxes weren't all ticked like i needed my hemoglobin to go up i needed to take an iron supplement i needed to confirm my placenta was far up and away from the cervix through a, uh, an ultrasound like late in pregnancy that i wasn't super excited about but whatever we did it to be able to secure a home birth there's a lot of things that came up uh that didn't guarantee a home birth so until we were sure 100 that we could have it we didn't talk we didn't tell anyone because we didn't want to stress people for something that potentially would not even happen anyways we were also not really in a position where we were open to judgment and doubts and being made to feel like we're careless Um, so we just kind of kept that on the down low and it ended up being at 38 weeks that we confirmed my hemoglobin was up, my iron was up and my, uh, my placenta was far from the cervix. So by that time I gave birth, not even a week and a half later. So some people knew we were considering a home birth. A lot of people did not know, but we still went to choice of birthplace night because I wanted to help educate my husband as much as possible and for him and for myself to really see what they had and what they brought to the table should we have a home birth. We left that experience with very positive um with a very positive like sense of the home birth. And then when we had the home visit with the midwives and we went over emergency procedures, we left that one with a 
more negative outlook on home birth. So I want to know what that was like for you as the partner. I guess you have to know going into like the emergency procedures meeting, like what you're getting into and that it's not a fun, fluffy conversation. It's the worst of the worst. Like it's all the worst fears if they arise, how it goes down. So it puts you in a place of doubt and fear because you're just hearing about everything that could go wrong and then what that would result in. Um, obviously, you shouldn't be going into it blind either. And like we were presented with all the equipment and all the different steps that would be taken given certain complications or events which is important to know just because you have to know what's going on you don't want to be caught blind and uh, surprised at something so it's not something to be ignored but it's something that is very heavy and that you kind of need to shake off afterwards you have to keep in mind that it's the worst case scenarios that you're looking at and uh, that it's not the most likely cases which is kind of it kind of warps your perception a little bit yeah i think at the at the presentation like the choice of home birth uh choice of birthplace all the equipment is presented as like look at everything we have we can intubate we can resuscitate we can put ivs we can you know we can do this we can do that and in this case we can we're going to use this to help the baby breathe. We're going to, you know, they're showing it as a like, look at all the stuff we have. Basically, the only thing we can do in your house is a C-section. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, oh, wow, you have even more equipment and even more life-saving measures that you can do in the home that I even imagined. Whereas that second meeting, the in-home emergency procedure meeting, was like all the things they did not have. <laughs> And that they would have to transfer for. All the reasons why they would need to call 911, have an ambulance standing by, and right. have you rush to the hospital. Right. So, and I I mean, and this is just our experience. Like, I don't know if every single midwifery clinic does this emergency meeting. And, like, I don't know how they go about it. Um, but we left the choice of birthplace night after manipulating, holding, touching, looking at all the equipment. Very positive. And then when we did the pretty much the same thing in our house, but it was more personal, personalized to what we wanted. Um, and we held and touched and looked at all the equipment with the midwife. But this time it was out of a more of a emergency, I guess, view. We left that one pretty negative. Like I, I teared up during the meeting and I held back tears and then when they left I was very clammy and shivering and sweaty and like I needed to to regulate and we needed to talk about it and you seemed to be quite affected by all the information um did that make you doubt our decision of having a home birth no it didn't make me doubt it it just showcases all the possible horrible things which you need to be aware of one way or another mm -hmm. and i think i after after she left and we spoke about what like the whole conversation that she went down um we spoke about all the things that could go wrong in a hospital and i think that's something that was missing from that conversation that like emergencies arise everywhere Anywhere and everywhere, things that are out of our control will happen, whether you're in the car on the way to hospital, whether you're at home, whether you're at a birthing center, whether you're at, like, when things go wrong, things go wrong. When things, you know, get a bit more complicated, they get complicated. And I actually had a significant hemorrhage at home. That was the complication that I dealt with. Um, and that's something that during our emergency meeting at home, was presented as I would have to be transferred to the hospital. My baby would have to be in put in a car seat after being born for like not even an hour. 
and my husband mm-hmm. would have to follow me to the hospital and what like follow the ambulance to the hospital and what stressed me out the most was that he would have to come back home alone to the the crime scene you know to the mess to the trauma and and clean it up alone that was my that was my biggest fear was putting my husband through that and turns out we did have that complication we did have a hemorrhage but we were able to stay home and manage it completely with our midwife in just confidence and trust and calm and it's that's not something that was presented during the emergency night that those complications can actually be managed at home they don't always end up in paramedics rushing you to the hospital. And something that came up a lot during that meeting was that the main reason why our team transfers new mothers attempting home birth to the hospital is because they can't cope. It had nothing to do with emergencies. It was repeated to me 25 times. The main reason we transfer first-time moms is because they can't cope and they want the drugs. It had nothing to do with emergencies. That impacted me significantly. I felt like the more I was hearing it, the less my care team was confident that I could do a home birth. It started to feel like doubt and skepticism. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't motivating. It wasn't reassuring. It didn't. It didn't empower me at all. The more I heard it, the more it made me feel like people did not have faith in me and my vision and my choice. Um, How did that impact you that the main reason why they transfer is coping? Um, Just as the partner, did that affect you at all? Did, was it like relieving to know that it's not because complications happen all the time at home and it was really just a choice, a preference from mom? Is it something that literally just went over your head and didn't affect you because you weren't the birthing person? It wasn't one of the concerns of having a home birth for me. Trying to go to hospital to get medication is not a scary thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I wasn't afraid of it. It didn't worry me. And it wasn't really on my mind. So what was your main fear of having a home birth? Main fear... was just the worst possible outcome. Main fear was finding myself the next day alone, without my wife, without my baby. And I guess living through the constant thought of what if we just went to the hospital. And if if we had a hospital birth, was that a fear that you also had? Finding yourself without your wife and your baby? Or was it a fear that was a lot more prominent with a home birth? It was more prominent with home birth, but I think that's just because hospital birth seems to be the standard. Mm-hmm. So... It, it, you almost have the sense that if something goes terribly wrong with a hospital birth, well, you did everything you could. But if something goes horribly wrong at home, well, there's a doubt that a different decision may have produced a better outcome. Right. And now that you're a home birth dad who watched his wife lose buckets of blood in his bathroom and you know ended up having a midwife sleep over to monitor and make sure that I would stop bleeding seeing how it was managed at home versus the thought of having had to be transferred to the hospital what's your take on that now I think that uh you know like like we had those emergency emergency procedures meetings but what you don't really come out of those meetings knowing is that those things are extremely uncommon and very unlikely to arrive especially when you've been very conscious about your pregnancy about your health about putting all the factors on your side so i'm of the belief now that if there was an actual emergency that 
would have occurred one way or another, one setting or another. I've seen how things of concern that arise can be dealt with effectively, efficiently, calmly, professionally, and uh, that's left me with a lot of confidence in the route that we took, and especially in the person that was present, or the people that were present at uh, the birth of our daughter. Yeah, so talking about the people that were present, um, we hired a birth doula, and I remember when I told you that I wanted to hire a birth doula, you seemed to not, un- like, you, you couldn't really see how that would be helpful because you would be there, our midwife would be there, there would be a backup midwife. It's already three people um, helping out. And after the birth of our daughter, you you told me you couldn't imagine having to have done this without our birth doula. So I kind of want to hear uh, your thoughts on that. And, and if you suggest to new parents and dads to have that extra because my birth doula was not just there for me she was very much your your friend during that that whole uh that whole night she was like my second husband (laughs) so I want to know what what your thoughts are on the birth doula now and and yeah just your experience with that it was definitely uh it was definitely a very positive experience I think that just like with the midwives you know interviewing and selecting the right doula is also very important we had an amazing one i can't necessarily speak for everyone but um, the person that was present there for us you know was totally 100 percent focused on us there's a wealth of knowledge there as well because especially as a first time parent to be there is no it's a rocky road getting from pregnancy to a newborn baby and there's a lot of uncertainty there's a lot of questions there's a lot of confusion that they can bring a lot of clarity to throughout that process you kind of think that you hear all these stories of uh, my wife was in labor for 72 hours and so I was thinking, like, 72 hours is a long time for me to be sitting next to you, holding your hand, telling you, okay, breathe, and okay, you know, like, (laughs) I I couldn't imagine doing that, you know, the whole entire time as as much as I want to be there and support my wife in in that moment. And I feel selfish even saying that because 72 hours would be a lot longer for... For me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But I was thinking, like, I don't know if we really need another pair of hands doing things. Uh, You know, when the tasks that a doula would do were described to me, it was like, you know, they can do the laundry and they can, you know. Comfort measures. They can clean your home and the comfort measures and, you know, they'll make sure everything's okay and, and they'll bring you food. And I'm thinking, like, I can do all that, like, in between you know, moments of support. I thought that I could handle it, handle it all. And then... <laughs> but there's a lot more going on at any given moment. It kind of goes zero to 100, what it did for us. It did for us. Let's, be, let's just clarify, I had a very precipitous birth. Like, my labor... Like, my real labor started at 8.30, 8.45 p.m., my midwife got here at 10 p.m. and I had the baby at 11:41. So it went zero to 100 for us very fast. But how amazing was it that you could be by my side throughout while the doula was doing more of the logistics? And at times when you were running around to get things, she was able to be the pair of hands on me. Yeah. I was never alone. You know, I was always supported. Well, oh, there's that exactly. It's fantastic knowing that you know even when I had to leave the room. Uh, You know, because whatever, like our dogs were barking at something or there's, you know, whatever task needs to be done. Getting a towel or someone asking for 
you know, scissors and you're running down to the kitchen. And or... obviously you can't find it and you're looking and the stress is there and, you know, things take longer than they need to. So it was a comfort knowing that, yeah, there was someone there, you know, eyes on, hands on, full attention in caring for my wife in that moment. And then when the baby was born and I was hemorrhaging, um, so you had her skin to skin, our doula was running up and down the stairs bringing me fluids bringing me electrolyte drinks, bringing me yogurt and uh, fruit and a lot of food so I could replenish. Um, that's likely something you would have had to do because the midwives were all on me until they could manage the bleed. As, as, as great as having the doula was you know, prior to birth, the best parts of having the doula around were post-birth right because it allowed me that time of Mm. not having to think of anything else but i spent that time you know sitting in our bed holding our baby while you know care was being given to you and all kinds of things were being done but i was permitted that time i was permitted those first precious moments to bond with her Mm -hmm. and that was that was perfect yeah would you suggest a, a family hire a birth doula? 100%. I wouldn't do it without one. Well, you wouldn't do it again without a birth doula? No. Oh. I love hearing that. Right before I went into labor, well, actually my water broke like 36 hours before I actually had my baby. So when the water broke, like that that night, I think it was the night before that you told me you would feel safest in a hospital. And I felt like that hadn't been clear. Like, I I was of the opinion that you now felt like it was safest to give birth at home. So when you shared that with me right before my due date, um, it kind of sent my head spinning because as much as I wanted a home birth, I wanted you to feel safe and secure in the birth of your child as well. You know, people say, oh, it's 50% his kid. No, it's 100% his kid and 100% mine. You know, we, and it's 100% our experience. So if you would have been a hard no on home birth, like I would have found a compromise. But I felt like you were 100% confident that it was safe to have a home birth. So yeah, when you said that the night before I my water broke, that you felt safest if we were at the hospital... I kind of panicked a little bit and wanted to make sure that you felt safe and you felt like we were doing the right decision. Um, was that something you felt the whole time and just didn't communicate clearly? Or is it something like, was it like a last minute fear that came up the closer we got to to the real thing? When I say safe, when I say I'd feel safest in a hospital, I'm talking about preserving the life of my wife and my baby. <laughs> So I think the optimal place for that to be done would be in a hospital. That's not to say that in doing so, all kinds of undesirable things wouldn't have occurred as well. Right. That there wouldn't be scars, physical, emotional, psychological, all these things that could have been avoided. But... I still stand by saying that if you think about it in that way. In a life preservation In way. a life preservation way where any freak accident possibility could happen. Yes, it would be safest. In the event of any very serious emergency happening at home, you would be transferred to hospital too. Um, so... That's what I meant by that. That's what I was expressing in that moment. And it wasn't that I was having doubts on the decision that was made. Mm -hmm. But it was me expressing that thought. And like I mentioned before, you know, worst case for me was, was finding myself in an empty house afterwards. So it was more... 
of me expressing my fears than me casting doubts and wanting to change plans. Yeah, and when you say life preservation, it's like assuming that birth would be a life or death situation. Well, it's kind of what we're we're fed a lot of fear on it. Yeah. A lot, a lot of fear. Um, so we go into it thinking that it's an emergency mm-hmm. when it's a very natural, regularly occurring, beautiful thing. We look at it as... We look at it as a crazy disaster instead. Which I think is unfortunate. Yeah, I agree. So we have a we had our home birth. We had a beautiful little girl at eleven forty one PM on December fourth. She's four weeks today. Um the the morning after our home birth, you couldn't even tell that I had given birth at home. Our team cleaned up our entire house, did laundry, disinfected the bath where I gave birth in. They scrubbed blood out of our carpets. They seriously, like, catered to us so well. I gave birth in my tub. I went to bed with my husband and my baby. Just a note on that as well. Something that I think... Sorry, the baby... (laughs) Something that was a pleasant surprise for me as well. And again, this might just speak to the team that we had present with us. But we have pets. We have two very needy dogs and a very social cat. Who were all up in everything while things were going on. And when things got too much, you know, they were kept away. But... It is also a uh, a moment of high stress for them. So we didn't want them, you know, away in their crate for hours on end. And the team cared for them as well in allowing them to be around them. There was equipment, you know, spread out all over. Obviously, there's like concerns for things that are sterile and cleanliness and those things obviously you know there's nothing i mean they weren't on the floor no but you know we have photos later on of our cat laying on their notepads and things like that (laughs) and while they're just sitting by and doing their thing and, and 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 letting it happen and that was meaningful to me as well yeah it's like because the, i was stressed about it i was mm-hmm. stressed about the thought of having to keep them away having to shoo them off having to you know lock them up having to get them out but i didn't feel like they wanted that at all it was very they came into our environment as it was and they adapted to us and so that we didn't have to change everything to adapt to them i love that i really love what you just said because it's so true they came into our home and they let our home be our home they didn't change anything and they left it the way they found it and they gave the same attention to us to me to you to the pets to the baby you know the same love and attention to everyone rather than having us adapt to you know, medical team in our home. They never told, well, and I'll say me because, you know, I'm, you know, the mm-hmm. the, the secondary uh, character here. <laughs> but I was never told to do anything. I was never told to, like... Go here, go there, do this, no. do that. Or get the dog away or get the dog off or mm-hmm. anything like that. Like, everything went very smoothly... Far more so than I would have expected, despite certain concerning situations arising. And so just to close, um, if we sat down with a couple right now and mom is really open to a home birth and would love to experience that, 
and that is kind of where you are. So he's only been exposed to birth as an emergency in movies and TV shows, uh, as birth being the closest his wife will ever be to dying and all those things we hear. So he's a hard no on home birth and mom is trying to open his mind and his heart up to that. And what would your advice be to dad? Be to keep an open mind and do your homework. Um, there's a lot of good information out there for and against anything. So weigh your options and also be aware that when you put yourself in someone else's hands, then it may not go the way you expect it to. And it's just important to know everything. It's important to know as much as you can about <clears throat> as much as you can. Because if you do your research, then you see how sometimes the reasons why things are done are not for good enough reasons. And depending on where your values are, what you care about most in terms of this situation, that could be for or against home birth or hospital birth or what other, whatever other options there may be. Our medical system is flawed. And if you watch a documentary like the business of being born it showcases that and there's a lot of shitty situations you can find yourself in that you don't necessarily have to despite it being the norm despite it being the standard despite it being what everyone expects of you and um, it's not always easiest well, it's it's never the easiest way to go against the norm but sometimes it can be what's best for you Perfect. And uh, just a word on postpartum. We've been having a, a beautiful postpartum season. We've had, we're, we're currently very blessed, I will say, that we're having such a positive postpartum experience. Um, I personally believe the home birth has a lot to do with that. The constant state of calm that we were in, um, the fact that I was able to birth without fear, the fact that we were able to go through complication without fear, um, the fact that you were able to bond with her in your own bed and spend all this precious time with her and with me, and that we really had a slow start where we were very present. Now the days are going by fast, but it was a very, like, very slow down transition to parenthood that I think the foundation of that was our home birth because we kind of maintained that vibe um, and in every way that it was hard to make the home birth decision because you think it might not be what's best even though it feels like it could be what's best for you it feels like it's not the norm um Making that decision make leaves you more confident to make more decisions that aren't the norm and leaves you more confident in doing things your way. So because we were able to confidently make that decision and have this beautiful home birth experience, postpartum wise, we've been making decisions like where baby sleeps, where we sleep, where baby naps, when baby feeds, how often do we let, like, how long do we let baby cry? Like, we've been going through all the decisions that the parents are, every parent's going to be going through. And we're going to be getting, we're getting information left and right from a bunch of different people and a bunch of different sources and a bunch of different studies, all for and against the same. Like, there's as much information out there, good or bad, about everything, like you said. But having, having made that home birth decision and having such a positive experience it makes it so much easier for us in postpartum to make a decision that might not be the norm around us, that might not be the suggestion every, every one of our parent friend is, tell, is suggesting or what our parents did or what the internet tells us to do. Because we have made that empowering decision together to have a home birth, despite the skepticism and despite the what ifs and, you know, because we knew that if something went wrong, we'd have to answer for it. And we consciously decided that we would answer for it. Instead of letting someone else make decisions for us that no one would answer if things went wrong. 
now we're confident in making decisions that are what are best for our family and we'll answer for them if something goes wrong. I think postpartum is a season that is, ugh, like I will say more important almost than, you know, anything in our life right now. It's, it's, the, it's our entire life right now is maneuvering this new, this new chapter. And had there been severe trauma or, you know, an inability for the baby to bond with me or me to bond with baby because of all the chemicals and the the drugs and the, the interventions and if, you know, the the sleep deprivation that I was able to save myself from being at home in my bed from day, like from second one compared to being at a hospital, um, I think all of that plays plays into it. Um, plays into our positive experience and I think our home birth is really the foundation of our postpartum experience like it started at that decision and I want to know what postpartum has been like for you so far and if you think our home birth has anything to do with it and if we had another kid should we choose to have another baby would you feel like home birth is still the way to go? I would have another home birth. I think that I'd be for going through the process in the same way that we did. You know, we'll make some changes, make some improvements where they can be made. But yeah, for sure. Um, overall, being the being the not pregnant partner, <laughs> the bigger percentage of the decision still remains with with mom. And where where her comfort is and where she feels like things would be best. But uh, yeah, uh, I'd be open-minded to definitely uh, recreating what we, what we had done for sure. And um, postpartum, I do think that uh, the setting, the environment has affected life with our newborn. We see small things that seem to be related in just how generally calm our daughter is um having been born in water in the bathtub she seems to like bath time <laughs> she loves bath time. there's little things that obviously we can't we can't say are because of our home birth but it seems to be showing signs of it possibly so um i think that it's brought a lot of positive to our postpartum side of this experience. And something that I found interesting was a couple of days after she was born, we had to leave home with her. And having done that for the first time, that seemed, that seemed stressful. Like with a newborn baby, like seeing her flop into her little car seat and things like that it didn't seem ideal it really didn't um so leaving the hospital and coming home that way seems even more so uh un- unpractical and unnatural like not ideal yeah in any way and for that maybe small reason but that alone impacted me a lot in in the sense of how how wonderful it was to be home and, and to stay home without it was all she knew you know was her home yeah well thank you for this conversation and for doing this mm-hmm. you you have a lot of uh important things to say and a perspective that's so unique now because we just lived through this and it's still so fresh so thank you for your time I love you. I love you too.